I love it, love it, love it, love it when the Cincinnati Reds listen to us. That's more like it. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds. Thank you so much for joining us here today. My name is Jeff Carr. He is Stephen Offenbaker, and we are lifelong Cincinnati Reds fans that have turned an addiction to this team and to information for you. This is my fifth season doing this podcast on a daily basis. This is Steve's second season being a part of Locked On Reds. He also podcasted about the Cincinnati Reds on the Reds Alert podcast for a few years before he joined me. And we want to thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to us talk some Reds with you. We encourage you. If you're listening, hit us up on Twitter. You can also uh, jump on our comment section here on YouTube. If this is your first time, thank you so much. Make sure that you're subscribed so you get all of our Reds content that we bring to you every day, all year long. We are all Reds because talking Reds is what we do. And we want to talk Reds with you. Lockdown Reds is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. And if you listen every day you know that we're pretty happy with the way that things went down on Wednesday night, the way that the Reds were able to salvage the weird two game set. I always, I, I hate two game series, but they, they always happen this way where they turn into a split, but the Reds got a split in a big way. And it was all thanks to TJ Friedel and Matt McClain. We'll tell you why here in just a moment. We're also going to look at a beautiful move. The addition by subtraction, massive addition by subtraction that the Reds did yesterday. And we're going to look at Jonathan India's injury situation and why it's a bigger situation for the Reds organization as a whole. That's coming up later on in today's show that is all brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And Steve, where we are going to start today is with the catch of the year. And very possibly, I know there's been a lot of other impressive catches for other teams and other players, but definitely in the conversation for catch of the year in Major League Baseball, certainly the catch of the year for the Cincinnati Reds. And it's certainly the outfielder defensive game of the year, not only the yes. catch of the year, because Friedel had himself not only one, but two really, really good catches out there in yeah. center field last night. And, you know, they may have both been uh, rally killers. Uh, in fact, the yeah. one the one Rob that probably went 400, four feet, six inches that he was able to go up there and get at center field kept two runs from going on the board. You know, that was the baseball guides. You know, you and I talked about this off air before we recorded. Yeah. That was the baseball guides giving us those two runs back that they took from us yesterday by having the sun come out for 35 seconds while Spencer Steer was trying to get set in left field. So, it, you know, it all works out. It all comes back around. But TJ Friedel did a phenomenal job, and it wasn't just defensively. He really was the spark, I think, that that fueled this team last night because he did it offensively he did it defensively uh and it was it was fun to watch yeah it is without a doubt the play that catapulted obviously the reds had to score we saw that the reds scored plenty in this game uh and they had to hit well they did that they had to pitch well they did that but at this point in the game it kind of felt like andrew abbott was giving up some hard contact he was allowing some base runners and it felt like it could get out of hand real fast and TJ Friedel was able to stop that and really get everything going. And it's funny to me because there were a lot of great stuff. And we're going to play a couple of clips from TJ Friedel, from Matt McLean, from Andrew Abbott, all talking about this play. But actually, TJ Friedel said that before this game, believe it or not, and they don't do this often, they practiced this type of catch. So we practiced that today. We literally lined up in like shallow right field. You set up the machine, and while the infielders and pitchers were doing PFPs, we were working on robbing home runs. So like we literally worked on that today. And so that's why when I was running, I'm looking at him, and you know he's ecstatic. And I'm looking, I'm like, we worked on that. Like that's because we worked on that today. Like what are the chances? You know, you only come by those maybe once in a career, or you know, very, very, like not many chances. 
So for us to work on that today and then have one in the game, it was, it was kind of crazy. Absolutely beautiful play. And the fact that they did that, just it's, it's so poetic that they don't do this every day. They don't even really do this once a week. They just happen to do it right before the day that TJ Friedel needed it the most. Well, it just goes, you know, we've talked about this as a magical year. Things are happening that, you know, haven't happened in Cincinnati in a long time. And and, and on many aspects of the game, the stars have been aligning and, and the Reds have had more than their fair share of the, the baseball gods smiling down upon them, just as I said earlier. And, and this is another one of those moments for them to have worked on it and for it to be fresh in TJ's mind. Uh, it, it just aligned. And, and what a great, uh, what a great reward for TJ to, to practice it before the game and then get to execute it and execute it so well. And he parlayed that with a lot of great stuff. He went three for five at the plate, scored three times, had a steal, even had a bunt hit that, and, and, and I'm, I'm blanking. I think it was Eli Morgan. I believe I, I cannot remember exactly the pitcher's name for the guardians, but really bruised that dude's ego because it was a bunt single down the first baseline. The first baseman couldn't come up and play it. Pitcher had to play it, tried to make a spectacular diving play where he scooped it and threw it. And it looked hilariously awful. And TJ Friedel was safe, easy. And then they had the trainers come out and look at the pitcher. And uh, my wife, who was there at the game with me, was just like, is he okay? And I'm like, yeah, he's suffering from what they call a bruised ego. And that is why the trainers are out there looking at him right that now. because That wasn't Norris for the... Was it maybe Norris? it was maybe it was Norris. I was trying to I was trying to picture who this was, but it was just it was everything that you can do. I mean, outside of hitting a home run, everything that you could possibly do to affect a game. TJ Friedel did it on Wednesday night, the TJ Friedel game, as it were. You know, his, his numbers show no signs of letting up, Jeff. Batting average is 280. That's tied for ninth, and he's tied for ninth in Major League Baseball right now in steals. I mean, the whole this league. Getting it, yeah, this guy's getting it done. That is, that's that's really not bad for a player. That as recently as the beginning of this year, we both were not expecting a whole lot from. We thought we kind of knew who he was, but he just continues to get better and better and better. And you know, I'm starting to really be a believer. We've said it before. He was an undrafted free agent. The Reds signed him. Literally every other team passed on him so many times he was not drafted. The Reds sign him. He's never on a prospect list. He gets called up last year. He gets sent down. He gets called up. He gets sent down. Does that five times. In fact, Wednesday, August 16th, yesterday, was the one-year anniversary of the final time that he got called up, and he was asked about that after uh, the amazing game that he put together. What was it a year ago today? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, 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 that's crazy that it was a year ago today. Um, I still remember like it was yesterday. I was like, my wife was just in, in Pittsburgh, and uh, we were in my sister's backyard, which actually it's funny because when I got called back up, we made the trip out to Pittsburgh shortly after I called back up, and we were in my sister's backyard with my family. So it was kind of deja vu being back there last uh, weekend in, in the backyard with all my family. And I had that same kind of thought. I knew it was around this time, but I didn't know it was exactly a year ago. So, um, it's been amazing. It's been such a blessing from God for, to put me in this position to be here and, and be able to impact the team the way that I can. So, um, you know, I'm very grateful and blessed. You know, TJ Friedel, uh, it's it's exciting to see these kind of guys. You know, we've you and I have talked about this, and I can't remember if it was on the air or not, but we've talked about that TJ Friedel is one of those types of players that Cincinnati loves, that 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 gritty, hardworking, hustling you know, blue collar type player. And there's a long history of that here in Cincinnati. And uh, it's nice to see him have that kind of success. And he's not the only guy right now on this team that plays that way. That's having very similar success because not to be outdone, Matt McClain also put together a game for himself last night. He went three for five with a two run home run, three total RBIs on the night and not one, but two steals. Remember, he tore up Noah Syndergaard whenever Syndergaard pitched for the Dodgers in his first appearance at Great American Ballpark this year. I think Noah Syndergaard is going to be happy to put the Reds and Cincinnati in his rear view, at least for this season, because the Reds have absolutely destroyed him. But yeah, Matt McClain had a beautiful night, was making lots of great contact on the ball. And it's funny you mention that because the whole blue collar, the mentality that TJ Friedel 
and Matt McClain both bring to the team. Matt McClain said something about TJ Friedel that I think is a very, very high uh, form of praise for TJ. Yeah, he's tough. Um, he's what we want to be as a team, like the way that he plays through his ups and downs. He's always playing hard, and that's really what matters. And uh, when he goes about it the right way, like obviously he's a really good player and stuff's going to show up. But the way he goes about his business and his work um, and just the way he plays the game day in and day out, no matter what, is a really good thing for me and a lot of the young guys and ev honestly everyone to see. I think that Matt McClain and TJ Friedel kind of feed off each other a little bit and – because TJ Friedel got hot, I think Matt McClain fed off of that last night. And, and they did that thing I said they needed to do on yesterday's show, which is they have to start stringing these hits together. Uh, yes. They lost that the first game of this series uh, to, Cle to Cleveland and were only out hit by one hit. Cleveland had seven hits in the first game. The Reds had six. They just couldn't put anything across because everything was spaced out and nothing was grouped together. Nobody really had an opportunity to make anything happen. In last night's game, they did that thing. They strung them together. They were able to feed off of each other, and it's really exciting. And here's a little stat for you. Uh, this comes courtesy of uh, Bally Sports Ohio. Uh, with those two steals, you know, we keep talking about how exciting the Reds are on the bases. Uh, there are nine players now on the Reds that have eight-plus stolen bases on the year. <laughs> the last time that happened, Jeffrey, was 1976. And I think... You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think 1976 ended up being a really good year for the Cincinnati Reds. Yes, I believe it uh, rhymes with Smurled Curie's Meep. <laughs> correct. World Series sweep is exactly what <laughs> happened in 1976 against the hated Yankees. So we will take that. If that's the outcome again this year, I'm all in. And it's just, I mean, that the, the night was the top two. It was TJ Friedel doing everything he can in all facets of the game. It was uh, Matt McClain just killing it at the plate. Special, you know, not to be outdone, Stuart Fairchild hit a bomb to left field that really got things started off there in that fourth inning. But overall, that's, that's what we needed. Like you said, stringing hits together getting stuff done. We'll talk about what Andrew Abbott did here in just a minute. And the Reds did something uh, with Andrew Abbott that I think we both liked. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're going to get to that here coming up. Uh, I tell you that TJ Friedel and Matt McClain, they are the big reasons that the Reds got out of here with a win. And I'm so excited, Jeff, because the Reds finally made the roster move that I wanted, that you wanted, that we all wanted them to make. Finally. We'll tell you why. It's addition by subtraction and what it all means coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Nutrafol. Now, look, if you're watching me on YouTube right now or you've met me in person or seen my pictures on Twitter, you know that I have the perfectly shaped head to shave it every day. Now, that could have all been changed if Nutrafol had been around back when I was in my 20s and 30s because Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. It is clinically shown to improve your hair growth. Nutrafol's hair growth supplements use physician formulated natural science backed ingredients. You can go to Nutrafol.com slash men to take their hair health wellness quiz. It will identify the causes of your thinning hair and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair health through the whole body wellness system. Nutrafol supports healthy hair growth from within by targeting root causes of thinning such as stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism through whole body health. And it really works. In a clinical study, 84% of men showed improvement in their hair growth after just six months of taking Nutrafol. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. And for a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code locked on MLB. Find out why over 4,000 hair healthcare providers recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men. That's spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men and enter the promo code locked on MLB. That's Nutrafol.com slash men. Promo code locked on MLB. Get healthier hair starting today. 
All right. If you can't be down at the ballpark for the Reds game, you can catch every pitch of the Reds hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Reds. Thanks, as always, for making Locked on Reds your first listen every day. Every day is coming up on the next episode of Locked on Reds. Well, Jeff's going to get you set for the series this weekend at Great American Ballpark against the Toronto Blue Jays. I wonder uh, if Joey's going to be take it easy kind of guy with the Toronto Blue Jays coming in town. Not sure. But Jeff's going to get you set for that series, and he's going to do it on a crossover with our guy from Locked on Blue Jays. That's going to be Go ahead. No, but you know what you know what I know. You know what I know is going to happen on Friday. I'm going to get a captain that, and you're going to see it on the podcast on Monday because it's going to be awesome. Because we got the Yacht Rock review going on Friday night. Going to be down at the ballpark. We might have us a new podcast staple. This captain's out. I know you're jealous. I know that you really. I, I, want that I normally, I normally would be, and if if your wardrobe, if. People thought your wardrobe could not possibly get any worse. Introduce the <laughs> captain's hat. I am sure that Hannah Carr is ecstatic about this. Yes, she was. She was like, "Oh my gosh, are you are you kidding?" Sure. I said, "I'm not." <laughs> all right, enough of all that. Uh, was it just a dream? Was it all a dream, Jeff? Well, if it was a dream, it was an ugly nightmare. But guess what? The Cincinnati Reds woke up and ended it. Luke Dreamweaver has been designated for assignment. He is out of here. He is out of the rotation. All of that made possible by Hunter Green. The Reds announced yesterday via social media that Hunter Green is slated to start Sunday at Great American Ballpark to wrap up that series with the Toronto He's Blue Jays. He is back. Luke Weaver is out. They've chosen to announce it now and use this time to bring an extra bullpen arm up and help this bullpen save some innings, which I think is a great move. This was a this was a good move. I don't know why it took them 75 years to finally do it, but I'm glad they did it. I'm just I'm, I'm just so happy. The Reds are getting their ace back. This is amazing. They're getting their best pitcher back on the roster. Very happy to see this. And look, I I, I don't don't want to go super negative with this, but let's call it what it is. Luke Weaver needed to be gone a long time ago. Like long time. There, there's so many people out there, whether it be on X or Twitter or whatever, or articles or, or people talking about it. And they're just like, you know, he was really here whenever the Reds needed him. He, he really did a good job of taking the ball every fifth day and, and, and really providing. Oh, I could have, I could have done that. If that's every metric, I could have done that. Like, let's, let's, let's not get it twisted. Why did it take so long? He had a 6.87 ERA, which we don't love to just focus on ERA. So let's look at the FIP. It does say he was getting a little unlucky. It's 5.88. Oh my god. Oh, gosh. that's so much better. He had a whip. Walks plus hits per innings pitched of 1.6. That means every inning he pitched, there was at least one and a half runners on base. He gave up 2.2 homers per nine, which means every time he would pitch nine innings, he'd give up at least two homers. But I want to do is, the next one. I want to do the next oh, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, you, you take it away. You take Opponents it away. Opponents hit against him in the first inning of every game that he pitched a slash line of 396, 443, 743. Those were the first inning numbers. I could have done better than that. I know that I could have done better than that. Well, 743, that's the OPS, right? That's that's on base plus slugging? Yeah. No, no, no. That's slugging. That's the one number. No. It's not on base <laughs> plus slugging. It's just slugging. Wonder, what is it? What's the, uh, what's, the, what's the OPS plus slugging? I wonder. You should have put that here. I bet it's like. Well, it's, it's 443 plus 743, and I don't know. Yeah, I bet do that it's, on like fly. it's like 11. I'm going to do it right now. It's 1.189. One six. Yeah, something like yeah. that. It's a lot. It's a lot. We're talking about a MVP level hitter that Luke Weaver was allowing the opponent to be in the first inning. Plus, this one was just colloquial, and I wanted to throw it in there. He has given up in the first inning. Of every game that he's, or, you know, all the games put together that he's pitched in the first inning, he's given up eight home runs. Alexis Diaz has given up four home runs in every game, all total put together this year. 
Luke Weaver did more than that in just the first inning that he pitched. If you wonder why this bullpen is so tired, here is Luke a Weaver. one a prime number one reason why this bullpen is so exhausted. Mike Miner, I think, was better than Luke Weaver. Oh, wow. <laughs> Chase Anderson oh. was better than Luke Weaver. Let, let's stop it. Jeff, like there's t- Jeff Hoffman. <laughs> As a starter, was, as a starter, was better than Luke Weaver. <laughs> I just, I, I think that there's, there's so much of this. Like, oh, he's, he's, oh, he's going, but, but, see, we had good times, didn't we? No, there were no good times. We're done. We're over. Let's move on. We're getting better. All right, this is what I know. <laughs> Luke Dream Weaver was really. Luke Nightmare Weaver, and I am so <laughs> glad. I am so so glad that the Reds front office finally woke up and got rid of him. Well, and, and and look here, this was a good good decision on the pitching. There was something else too, and we almost forgot this uh, because we moved it around here a little bit. But the Reds made another good decision with their pitching with Andrew Abbott. On Wednesday night, Andrew Abbott threw five innings. He gave up two runs. Really looking a little bit worse for wear there in the third inning tj friedel saved him with that amazing homer saving catch plus he then made another amazing catch where he ran into the wall at full speed and still held, held on to the ball but luke weaver i mean luke weaver we talked about him too much and i'm seeing him in the notes andrew rabbit didn't necessarily have his best stuff but he was still pitching okay he was moving along david bell saw this and, and yes, there's going to be somebody that jumps in the box score and says, why did he only throw five innings? He only had 84 pitches. That was the best decision that David Bell made last night, because this is about the long game with Andrew Abbott. Absolutely. I have been talking for several days now about situational awareness. And in this instance, the Reds didn't need Andrew Abbott to go any further in the game. It was pretty clear the Reds were on a roll and they were going to win this game. You could see it. You could, you could get the feeling from it. And in that moment, you can go to the lesser of the arms in the bullpen. You can save those pitches. We're at the point of the year where every pitch save is a pitch that he can possibly now throw in October during a playoff run. So yes. in the games that you can get him out and not, make your bullpen more vulnerable. And right now the Reds have an extra arm in the bullpen because of the Weaver move. They were uh, leading the game. They could use the lesser of the guys. It didn't need to be Alexis Diaz right out of the gate. Uh, You could afford to save some pitches for later. And I like that move. I absolutely agree with you, Jeff. This was the way to handle it in this start. Now that's not to say that it's always the right move. Situational awareness. There's times he's pulled Brandon Williamson. This has been your big bugaboo that he doesn't let him work through jams. And this wasn't that type of situation. It was, it was exactly the right move and I'm glad he made it. Yeah, it was, it was a beautiful move and it just, it capped off a day of good pitching decisions that the Reds made by getting rid of Luke Weaver, by limiting Andrew Rabbit, because make no mistake about it. The Reds are not trying to play the game of, are we going to shut him down or not? They're playing the game of how do we manage his workload without having to even talk about shutting him down? Because Obviously he is super valuable to this team. It is a, it is a conversation and it's a conversation we'll have on another podcast of whenever green and Lodolo are back, who is the number three starter? Is it Abbott? Is it Ashcraft? Is it Williamson? Uh, There's a discussion. I think Williams is more uh, Williamson is more of a dark horse than the other two, but still like you want Abbott available in the playoffs. This is how you do it. Absolutely. And uh, you know, again, the Reds made all – they listened to us, Jeff. They listened <laughs> to us. I, I, I thank Nick Craw and David Bell for watching the show yesterday. Uh, appreciate you guys. I'm sure you're back today for more. Uh, and you did what we said needed to be done. Uh, I'm super excited about it. The Reds finally woke up. The nightmare is over. Weaver is out, and the Reds are moving forward. Speaking of waking up, uh, Jonathan India had some things to say but how the Reds have handled his most recent injury. We'll talk about that coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Sleeper. 
If you want the chance to win more money with less picks, then you need to head to Sleeper, the number one sports app, where you can win up to 100 times your money on just two or more fantasy baseball picks. Sleeper is now offering up to a 100 times payout for up to eight pick contests. Choose as many as eight players that you like and pick more or less on your favorite baseball stats like homers, strikeouts, hits, and more. Get your picks right and you could win big. If you think Joey Votto's going to bang, you smash more on the homers. If you think Ellie's going to run, you smash more on the steals. If you think that Andrew Abbott is going to deal, then smash more on those strikeouts. Entries can be made in 30 seconds or less. It's that easy. Plus, when you want to get your money, they have safe and fast withdrawals. Use promo code Locked On. And you'll even get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. So win a hundred times uh, your money that you bet and get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit using the promo code locked on terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details currently operational in over 30 States. Check out sleeper today. And if you can't uh, make it down to the ballpark to get your captain's hat, uh, you can catch every pitch of the Reds hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Reds. All right, I'm going to bite. Are you going to pick up an extra captain's hat for me and I can pick it up in September when I... I'm trying to figure out... Hannah's not sounding like this is going to be a part of her wardrobe moving forward, so ah, you might be able yes. to get hers. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll see about all that. But yeah... Um, uh, uh, in between episodes though, make sure you continue to follow the great reds content that we've got for you. We've got an amazing community on discord. Cannot uh, recommend joining in enough. We've got a lot of great folks, stock and reds baseball over there all day long. We've got the link down in the description of today's episode. Plus you can follow me on subtext. You get a direct line to me from your phone. And you get a free uh, 14 day trial as well. Text I'm in to 513 597 0988 or just follow the link down in the description as well. We put lots of links in the description uh, these days. Uh, Steve, uh, there was a story, and I know that uh, you and I have been talking about this for a few days, but there was an interesting article in the Enquirer. It was about Jonathan India and his response to how his injury has gone. You remember this is about what two and a half, three weeks ago. He it was announced that he had plantar fasciitis, and he went on the injured list. But he said, "I'll be back in ten days." Well, according to this article in the Enquirer, he got an MRI, confirmed that it was plantar fasciitis continued kind of practicing rehabbing, you know, light work, making sure everything was good to go. He said, you know, in most cases, I didn't feel any pain except for when I tried to make cuts, things like that, I would feel that pain. And so then whenever time came that he was going to come off the injured list, what happened? They announced that he yeah, went to, yeah, he still had pain. He went to another doctor, got another opinion and was shut down for two weeks. This whole plantar fasciitis thing, let's start with that because what is that? I think for most of us, we're just like plantar fa what, what is this, a Star Trek episode? <laughs> so there's very thick tissue and tendons that run basically from the calcaneus bone, which is your heel bone, and it runs forward on the underside of your foot, and it spreads out like fingers as it heads towards your toes, and it connects to the metatarsals or the toes, and that helps with your, your planting and your moving. So anytime you figure if you're taking off to run, your heel comes up in the air, you plant your foot in the ground and you push off. So every time that Jonathan India does that, he's going to feel pain in his heel. And that's what he's experiencing. Uh, he was doing the work and he was feeling pain in his foot. Here's the confounding thing. Here's the, the real curiosity in this whole business. They diagnosed this almost immediately, as you say. Uh, he went on the injured list on Ju July 30th, uh, and they had a diagnosis then. As you uh, mentioned, they did the MRI. They confirmed it. Uh, they didn't think it would be a long time, and they had him working out. That's where it gets curious because when you're trying to, to rest this injury, uh, the number one thing you do is take time to rest. You put ice on your heel. You put ice in the arches of your foot. Uh, you take an anti-inflammatory steroidal type medication uh, to reduce the inflammation in there and the rest 
combined with the ice, combined with the anti-inflammatory, allows that tissue to heal. Uh, so Jonathan India spent two weeks on the injured list and didn't make any progress because he wasn't allowing this injury to heal. He wasn't resting it. And I just can't figure out why anybody within the Reds medical staff was allowing him to do anything except maybe, you know, sit on the bench and watch. And it wasn't even so much as it was like, you know, India was forcing his hand. We, we always talk a lot about the resiliency of Jonathan India. He does not like to take time off for any injury, but this was more so almost a, a case where the training staff was like, yeah, encouraging it. Not even just saying, yeah, you can go ahead and do it. They're like, you know, let, let's do, let's go ahead. Let's continue this work. Let's do all this stuff. And this is where the article took an interesting turn because it quoted India, not, not as in like, well, we're surmising this is what he meant. It quoted him as saying, it kind of pissed me off a little bit. Like he was angry when he found out because what happens is he goes to the second doctor, I believe it said in Los Angeles or something like that. He goes to a second doctor to get a second opinion. And this doctor looks at him crazy. And is just like, you've been running. You, you should have shut down for two weeks at the beginning of all of this. You should have not been doing anything, let alone running on it. And so this doctor was confounded as to how this situation was handled. And because of how much he was confounded, that just made India more mad about this. So this now stretches back to last year, whenever India had his hamstring injury and that whole debacle where he comes back, re-injures it even further then is out for a long time. The differences here are he had an MRI on his plantar fasciitis very quickly. The hamstring, he didn't have an MRI on initially. They thought, okay, it's probably something you give it just a smidge of rest and then you'll be back and you'll be fine. That didn't happen. And, and, and now it's kind of starting to build into something like, you keep doing this with Jonathan India. What are you doing with everyone else? And the question is posed to the Reds training staff that, oh, by the way, was overhauled two years ago. That's right. And if you recall, when Jonathan India pulled his hamstring, 30 seconds later, I was blowing up your phone about how mm. the Reds, they, they had to shut him down. Shut him. They needed to keep him from doing anything. You know, I outlined a whole thing and they, they did the exact opposite all the way around. And it led to exactly what I said it was going to lead to. It wasn't rocket science. I mean, it's not, you know, listen, I am not a, I am not a physician. I have other roles in the medical field. Uh, but even I know how you have to take care of that. And they didn't. And as you say, they were overhauled this medical staff largely a couple seasons back. And there's been nothing but problems ever since. If I mean, let's look at last year where the Reds led probably all of baseball. I'd have to go pull the exact numbers, but an extraordinary amount of injuries, an extraordinary amount of players having to be used on the major league roster. Uh, I think you combine that with what Jonathan Indy is saying. We have a pretty decent sample size now and a track history of how things have worked. Uh, maybe it's time to make some more changes within this medical staff, because it just seems to me that this team is becoming a bit of a laughing stock at times for how they handle injuries and how often they play shorthanded and how often David Bell looks in a camera and says, well, he's going to be back in about three days. And then three weeks later, you finally yeah. get that guy back. You know, it, it, it's time to reevaluate the medical situation within the Cincinnati Reds. And, and maybe nobody loses their job. Maybe there's very good reasons that we don't know about. HIPAA excludes some of the medical information from being released, but maybe there's a good reason. But at the very minimum, I feel like there should be a very thorough review of the medical situation within the Reds to prevent things like this from happening again. I think it's important to remember here, too, because you mentioned this, and this is something that I, I hear a lot of people say when it comes to Reds injuries. David Bell does not have a say as to when a player comes back. We do often give him grief for being far too optimistic with his own prognosis, but he has nothing to do with signing off on a player returning. It's the medical staff that says, yes, he's ready to come back. And then David Bell inserts him into the lineup. It's not well, the and, other way around. Let's be clear. He's the face of that thing. I don't think David Bell's sitting in his office going, oh, what's what's Johnny got? Oh, that's going to be nine days. That's not David Bell. Somebody's no. telling David Bell that it's going to be nine days. And if that's it, fair. It's yeah. not the player. Yeah. It's the train. Someone's telling him that. And he's repeating it because he's the face uh, talking to the media. But 
that's why I'm saying somewhere there needs to be a review to, to rein this in a little bit. It's, it's clear to me now that some adjustments at the very least need to be made in how they're handling players moving forward. Well, and they're doing themselves a disservice because this team has done a fantastic job of reorganizing its scouting department, reorganizing its development department, reorganizing the way that it coaches players from the time they draft them or sign them internationally to the time that they're calling them up to the major leagues. They've done a fantastic job at doing that. That's why they are where they are right now. If you're going to have a training staff that drops the ball so hard, you've really got to look at that because then you're doing your players dirty by, you know, pushing them through this development thing that is making them just an amazing major leaguer. And then they come up and they have their first injury and then they lose as much time as they end up losing. Like there, there's nothing to say that this has any relation to what Hunter Green and Nicoladolo have gone through, but it felt like throughout the year we kept hearing, well, they'll be back in two weeks. Well, okay, three, oh, all right, maybe four or five. All right, yeah, maybe, well, maybe six. Hunter Green's a great example. They skipped a start because yeah. his hip hurt. Then they brought him back out to pitch again, and then he went on the disabled list for a prolonged for period of two time. Months. For two yeah. months. With the hip, and I'm injured list, sorry. He goes on the injured list after that again for two months. So, yeah, there, there's lots of examples of this, and I, I think this is something that we need to continue to talk about and continue to yes. watch and, and really hope that if they don't do it in season, which I can kind of understand, that it is thoroughly addressed this coming off season because we keep telling 2024 is going to be the year, and we can't have that be derailed by injuries. The uh, Reds training staff has nothing to do with Joe Burrow's calf, right? I hope not. <laughs> okay, good. That, that's that. I really hope that's and that. Yeah, that's how we're going to end today's podcast. Yeah, before we get out of here, don't forget you can catch every pitch of the Reds' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just download the app and search the word Reds. That'll wrap us up for this edition of Lockdown Reds. Thanks as always for making us your first listen every day. Every day is coming up on the next Lockdown Reds. What can we expect from this Reds series against the Blue Jays at Great American Ballpark? And we'll be talking all things Captain Hats and things like that with Craig Ballard from Locked On Blue Jays as we have a crossover. Don't get to talk to the Blue Jays guys very often, so looking forward to that. Uh, but until then, Steve, what can people expect from you and me? Well, we'll keep monitoring the rehabs and the injury news and the medical staff and any other information we can pull together while we also keep an eye on what's going on in the minor leagues and in the majors. And we're going to gather up all that information, bring it back right here to keep you locked on Reds every single day. Captain's hat. Good grief.